15 Minutes of Fame. You are now listening to 15 Minutes of Fame Radio. Let's go. I want to talk to you about not particularly the incident yesterday. Like they were, right. they, I want to talk to you about phys- physical shit in battle rap, period. Right. Right. So a lot of that shit, will, I'm sure a lot of it's going to come on y'all. Why mm-hmm. didn't y'all do this mm-hmm. and why didn't mm-hmm. y'all do that? Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> is there a way to control that aspect of battle rap? Because I'm going to be honest with you. I think it actually is getting a little... It's getting too, too much. much now. It's getting too way much. too much. Yeah. Um, I mean, what's crazy is early, you know, earlier today, we had another conversation about this. You know what I mean? I don't mm. know if Unk is going to flash that conversation in this time, but it actually relates to this whole subject and my feelings on it. But I'll be more than glad to express it again. I do believe that hip hop is an aggressive culture. It is. But you know, for those of you that don't know, you know what I'm saying? Back in the days when dudes were rap, if you came to somebody's black block to battle them, or break dance against them and your shit wasn't up to par, you might get beat up, might get chased out. So it does have, it is steeped in a little bit of aggression. And I think that aggression is a good part of it, especially in the culture and the climate that we live in now, where where hip hop has become more passive. You know, you got guys painting their fingernails and wearing necklaces and dresses. I don't want, I got that part when we're talking about this. But what I'm saying, but 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 the point that I'm making is that I just think like what's going on presently. I think people coming to the stage with a chip on their shoulder. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Okay. And I and I don't think that it's necessary because I think that we all know each other. That's that the everybody thing that who's gets on me. stage yeah. knows that nobody's really out to hurt each other. That we all care and we love about each. We all love each other, even if we don't actually deal with those certain individuals. And I'm speaking from an MC's perspective. Mm. Like even if I know that I don't like this guy very much, I don't want to see him die. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. That's what the purpose of battle rap is for, so that we could be expressive and say these unique and crazy things to each other and in a, an art form. And, and, and it is aggressive and it is there without anybody getting hurt or there being any, you know, physical uh, repercussions from the battle. So with that being said, I just think that guys, everybody need to calm down. You know what I mean? I think people need to take it down and talk a little bit. You know what I'm saying? And understand that even though the fans and the people in the media hype stuff up and make it seem like you got punked and make jokes and make memes, nobody wants to really see anybody get hurt. No. So when the fans are watching and they see somebody bump you extra hard on stage in a battle, they don't think you're soft. You know what I'm saying? At this point, they understand what's going on and that you guys are battling. So when somebody does shoulder bump you mad hard, I think the best thing that you could do is just remain cool and do it back to them in the, in the following round. As long as both MCs have that understanding that, you know, this is part of the show, it's theatrics, and it's going to make for a better battle, and it's going to give people that, you know, that heightened sense of, 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 of energy to make the battles better, I think that everybody should be accepting of it. Or let's meet prior and say hey let's Don't not bump it. each other right. let's not do this because i personally can't handle it but i think when it gets to the point where guys are acting like they're gonna fight or even you know some probably really are gonna fight i think that it's taking it too far and i think that um you know it's only a matter of time before things explode you know recently there's been a few incidents an unfortunate incidents that have happened but you know i just want to say that you know, we don't really advocate that. You know, we don't actually show those incidents if they do ever happen on the URL stage. We don't show them on our live streams and we don't show them on our YouTube channel. I don't because, record them and right. try to put them we're up. Try- yeah, yourself. we're trying yeah. We're trying to get away from that. Our focus is the raps and the, and the lyricism. You know what I mean? So I will say this message to everybody who battles, to fans. Like, we don't want to see nobody fight. We don't want to see nobody get hurt. You know what I mean? There are other um, outlets for that. If you feel like you have to fight somebody, why don't you just wait till the battle's over and then invite them outside, go around the corner, settle any issues or have any conversations that you want to have and um, keep that outside of the cameras, keep that outside of the culture. Because, you know, what happens is, you know, in mainstream hip hop, people die. Facts. People get killed, people get shot at concerts, people, you know, you know, events that are taking place, people are getting arrested, shot, cars shot up. And they're able to flourish because of the music business and because of the money that's being generated. It's kind of pushed to the side. But if something happens in battle rap, 
it's going to be a stigma that's attached to battle rap and it's going to seem yeah, like I'm, I'm we go, fight I'm, all I'm, the time i'm gonna you know jump out saying? the window right now and i'm gonna say and i want to make sure hopefully enough people see this but i noticed that when the shit happened with murder mook and them mm -hmm. every fucking publication they never cover battle rap but right. all of a sudden i've seen all these publications they want to tell the story about what happened half of them motherfuckers wasn't even getting the names right am i getting right. angry right now while i'm saying this because yes. i am because right. they don't cover it, you know, when we got so much shit, good shit happening in battle rap, but right. then as soon as something bad happened, you got people that never fucking mentioned battle rap in their publication mentioning right. it. Right, Monte it makes, that makes me mad, it also makes me mad that the people in the culture give them the content to right. actually talk about. They give them so, the content and they give them the validity. Yeah. Right, you know and, 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 and it's like, I, I say this because now, with the bumping and shit like right. that, like enough of that keeps happening, more shit will happen. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna ask you a question. What can you do? What can URL do on their end to try to prevent or at least the cause I like the bumping. Well, right it, now what it, we're doing right now too much is too is much. What we're doing is behind the scenes, we're talking to certain individuals that we believe need to be spoken to mm -hmm. in regards to how they carry themselves and their etiquette and you know, just their overall performance is when they touch the stage, the cameras are on and things are going live. Because right. once something's going live, there's no way to contain it. There's no way to control it if something should transpire. So we are talking to people about it and we are taking some um, steps to some preventative measures to make sure that nothing does happen. But I mean, if you really think about it, on URL we've had where things got crazy, two incidents in 10 years, you know what I'm saying? And I, I just think, like you said, it's, it's, it's crazy to me how these publications are busting out covering this, but they're not covering when we're selling out live nation venues around the country. They're not covering when we're doubling the price point of your average mainstream artist. They're not covering the lines that go down the block and around the corner and all of this energy where people are actually showing up for lyricism, which is the basis of hip hop music. They're not covering those things the minute that an incident happens or something happens that could be perceived as being bad, they want to cover it and put this stigma. Then it on becomes the every time I go to such and such website, it's all it's always right. a battle rap fight because they right. never cover the regular shit. Right. So those people that see that only knows that part right. of battle rap. They don't rap. cover the lyricism. Right. They don't cover these great, you know, these great performances that these guys are putting on. You know they what I mean? They deserve more negative. of a coverage. So. You know, I, I, you know, I find that a little disheartening. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? And I feel like a lot of these hip hop outlets that are doing that should be ashamed of themselves because everybody complains about mainstream music and lyricism and what's happened and the changes and we want to go back to this time or that time when there's actually something <laughs> that has no filler, that is just straight rhymes, okay? That is selling out around the country that's selling out in other countries, that's breaking box office records in a lot of the big venues around the country, and you're not covering it. So you have to take some responsibility for some, for the way that some of the thing, for for the way that things are, if you're not covering the good aspects of the things that are taking place. Facts. You know what I mean? So, you know, it's our job to work and continue to push forward to make people aware of these things. And, and, I, and I feel like right now we're doing a good job. But to kind of get back to what you're talking about in terms of the bumping, the pushing, the aggression, I do think it does have a place in battle rap alongside lyricism. Sure. Because battle rap, in, in, in actuality, modern day battle rap is theatrics. It is a performance. You know what I mean? It's mm -hmm. not just rhymes. It's, you know, it's comedic timing, vocal projection, you know what I mean? There's, there's so many other things besides lyricism that encompass what the modern day battle, battle rap is. And I think that, you know, the aggression part is part of hip hop. Hip hop is an aggressive sport, or at least it was. Right. And I think that level of aggression and lyricism lives within URL now. You know what I mean? And as I said, we spoke about this earlier. You may want to clip some of that in after if it makes sense. But for the most part, you know, we don't advocate the violence. We and don't you want are the addressing the yeah, we issues are behind the, the issues scenes right now. Behind the scenes Good. right Good. now. Good. That's and what's I'm sending out too. this PSA to everybody mm -hmm. right now. This has to stop. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because I don't want it to boil over to the point where someone gets hurt. hurt. Fortunately, no one's been hurt. And, you know, there's been a couple of incidents and you've been able to break them up, but 
there has to be a certain level of conduct when you hit the stage. You Facts. know what I'm saying? Professionalism. And it has to be there. You have to understand that the guy next to you wants it as bad as you do. Nobody thinks you're a punk if somebody's screaming in your face this close and bumps you on the shoulder. We all know that it's part of the sport. Nobody is judging you. You know what I'm saying? The only time... Now, if you're outside and the cameras are off and it's not a battle and somebody does something like that to you, we get then it. of course you handle your business, you go around the corner, you have your conversation, and you take care of things. But when you're on stage, nobody's going to think you're soft. Yeah, they're going to ooh and ah. And that's part of the sport. And you have to take the good with the bad. You know what I mean? Of course the crowd's going to hype it up like you're getting punked. But they know really that you're not getting punked. Just like they know when they're watching a WWE match and somebody catches an elbow on the chair on the back of the head. They go ooh and ah, but they know that the guy's not hurt. But it's entertainment. You know what I'm saying? And that's what that's MCs have to understand. This is still entertainment. But if we start to get violent and we hit each other and we hurt each other we can't get sponsors and we can't go to the next level and we can't break the ceiling we're doing a great job we're selling out around the country we're doing big shows we're, you know we're getting um, linked into bigger platforms we're getting bigger sponsors but at this point guys we have to demonstrate some level of control and we have to have a clear understanding of what this is and have the aggression there, but have it to a point where it's controlled, where nobody's getting hurt, and we're delivering good performances to the fans and the consumers, and we're continuing to grow. So I think once we understand that and everybody's in unison and we understand that we can't do these types of things where, you know, there's a fight and we have to pull people back by the body and the neck and they're throwing drinks and, you know, trying to fight each other and maybe they don't get hurt, that's not acceptable either. But when people are actually fighting and you have mace and these different things happen, it's terrible. It's not something that we want. It's not something that we promote. And it's not something that um, we want to be a, a part of we're going to tolerate. So for the fans out there, I just want to make it clear that we don't advocate it. And I also want to make it clear that we are taking the necessary precautions to make sure that these things don't happen in the future. My man, thank you very much. 15 minutes of fame. E. Beasley. Let's go!